Hi everybody, I am Cheryl with JJ Bean Designs, and I can't talk tonight obviously. Anyways, I'm Cheryl with JJ Bean Designs, and I am live with you tonight on the Dixie Bell page. Super excited, we're going to play with these end tables tonight with a little bit of vintage duck egg. I am in New Hampshire, so when you come on, please say hello, let us know that you are here, and let us know where you're coming in from. So. Typically, we get people from all over the world, so I get really excited to see where everybody's coming in from. So make sure you say hi and let us know where you're watching from. Like I said, I am in New Hampshire. Today was a little bit of a rainy day today for us. I'm hoping that uh, we needed the rain, but we'll see what happens with our fall stuff coming up. So lots of leaves down everywhere. All the leaves are coming down, starting to get some cold weather. I'd like to know what it's like where you guys are at. I know um, people in Florida just dealt with a little bit of a hurricane or thing, so I hope everybody's been safe. Say hello. Hey, Ray in Indiana. How are you? Hello in Michigan, Patricia. All right. We got lots of people on here tonight. Hi from Florida. Stephanie, where in Florida are you at? And Ronnie in Massachusetts. I'm in New Hampshire. Where in Massachusetts are you at? All right. So... The first thing I'm going to go over is we're going to do these end tables, but these are end tables that I was able to pick up, um, and I was pretty excited about them because there was a matching pair, and I love the tables that have these long legs like this, so like awesome. So we have Kathy in Kansas, Sheila in Tennessee, Charlene from Palmdale, California, and we have Lucia from sunny um, Northeast Ohio. Great, Kathy in Naples, Florida, Odessa, Florida. Yes, Stephanie. So I actually used to live in the Tampa Bay area, right by Dixie Bell, actually. So, and then Randolph, Flo uh, Randolph, Massachusetts. Nice, Tennessee. All right, everybody, Texas. All right, so tonight, while I paint, just to let you know, if I can't get to your questions while I'm painting, I do always, always come back on and answer questions. David said he's coming in from Kansas City, Missouri. He's dying to try the Amber Moose. That's great because guess what? I think my next week live is Moose. I think. I'm just waiting for it to come in. As soon as it comes in, I'll be going over Moose so you guys will get to see the Moose a little bit. And Storm, just fine. At the used $400 get all our Port Ritchie. Hey there, Port Ritchie. That's where I lived when I lived down there. And hey, Betty in Texas. All right. So, um, again... I'm glad you guys are awesome. Let me know where you came in from. Hello, everyone. If I can't answer your questions while we're painting and doing things, I do come back on and I answer everybody's questions. So I picked up these pieces because, and I'll swing it around. You can see there's two of them. I picked them up because I loved this drawer front on them. I love the legs, but somebody had previously done like a finish on them, but it's all chipping. So I, today, what I did is I prepped it. So how did I prep this? So the first thing I did is I actually sanded, um, oh nice, so we just bought DB Moose from us, that's awesome. Um, so what I did first is I sanded so that I didn't have any like broken pieces over here coming off and I made sure the rest of the stuff that was on here was adhered very well. If this paint was not adhered very well, I would want to strip it before I painted. And the reason being is, is I don't want the new paint that I put on to come off because the old finish came off. So. Luckily, this piece, I didn't have to do that. Now I just can't decide if I want to paint the drawers or leave the drawers natural with the top because I am going to leave the top natural and I may leave the drawers natural as well and just keep them uh, the way they are. So we may not paint the drawers tonight. Can't decide. All right, so after I sand it down, I clean my piece with white lightning. This is white lightning. If you guys have not used the white lightning, let me explain to you how you use it. Let me grab my handy dandy little spray bottle over here. This has two tablespoons per a gallon of water. But what I do with it, so just to give you a hint, I have had, this is a new jar, but I've had the same jar. Let me see if I can see it on my shelf over here. I think it's in my other area because I just used it on something. Um, I've had the same jar for a year and a half. A year and a half, and I paint a ton of furniture. So what I do is I take this spray bottle, I mix it for the parts that are equal to this, and I shake it up really, really well, and I leave this downstairs in my workshop, and this is what I spray on my furniture, and I scrub it down with a scrubby pad. Then I go back, and I use hot water until all my water comes out clean, meaning there's nothing left on that piece that I need to come up. Why do I use white lightning? White lightning cleans your pieces amazingly. Just when you think you don't have anything left on there, 
You'll be like, oh, white lightning found another piece. I need to get it off of there. You don't want your dirt, you don't want your grime, anything on there. Most important, you have to wash the white lightning on after. So what I use is I use hot water and I just put it into it. Like I keep a little bucket and I just wash it down and then I keep going until that water comes out clear or the rag that I'm doing it with comes out clear. All right, super important. Clean and prepping your pieces. If you do not clean and prep your pieces, they're just not gonna come out as good as you want them to. So, all right, so let's put this aside. What I'm gonna be using tonight is I am going to be working with one of my favorite colors, Vintage Duck Egg. So I was going to do something kind of fancy on this but then I have a customer that actually asked me to paint them in vintage for her. So that's why they're going to be done in vintage duck egg, which is actually one of my favorite colors too. So we're going to shake our paint up really good. Always make sure you shake or stir your paint up really well before you use it. Now, I'm going to wind up putting my back to you guys. And then I'm going to be using my flat medium. So tools of the trade are very, very important. I use Dixie Bell brushes. I use them all with anything that I do. The reason being is, can you see those filaments? They're nice, they're thin, they're soft, they make your paint go on wonderful. And I know what the next thing's gonna be. They've been sold out, I agree. They're sold out on Dixie Bell's site, but a lot of local retailers still have brushes. So that leads me to what's up in our comments right now. If you are looking for more Dixie Bell products, brushes, other things, Please go to the link up in the top and look for your local retailer. And please try and give your local retailer business first because um, we always want to support small business, right? Somebody said, first time watching. Jody, that's awesome. So, yes, please make sure you look for your local retailer. If you cannot find your local retailer, do me a favor. Reach back out to me. If I don't have it, I can probably find somebody that can get you what you need, okay? So, um, Jane Sheets just said she has a ton of brushes. Jane, can you do me a favor and just put your link to your business on here so that people need to see where they can get brushes at, they can get their brushes? I truly believe an investment in the Dixie Bell brushes is so, so worth it. It does make your paint go on wonderful. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna need is our spray bottle, which I just dropped it. So I gotta look where I put it, I apologize, guys. My spray bottle was right here. Give me two seconds, be right back. I think it rolled under my thing, so we're gonna use this one. All right, so what I use this, and I actually always missed my brushes first, and the reason being is that you want a damp brush, because what happens is whenever you're painting, and I say this on all my videos, so if you guys have followed me before, you know I always say this, you always wanna have a damp brush when you're painting. It helps load the paint, which in return makes the paint go on nice and smooth on your piece. And there we go, let me start going in here. So. I've already dampened it. Oh, I love this vintage duck egg. You guys ready for this? Ready for this beauty? All right. Look how nice these brushes put that on. Can you guys see how smooth that goes on? What I am gonna do is remove this drawer though because I think I'm gonna wind up leaving it in the natural wood so I don't wanna get paint on it. Look how smooth that goes on. That's the brush doing that. Here, let me bring this forward just a little bit so you guys can see that a little bit closer. Can you guys see that better? All right, and now I'm gonna come up. Now, some people tape off their pieces at the top. I don't, only because I've been painting for so long that I know how to use my brush to get that nice edge to it. But if you don't feel comfortable with that, getting that nice edge with your brush, you would use your brush just to kind of go right to the top and let it push just a little bit and that brush will give you that edging you need. If you don't feel comfortable with it, then you can go ahead and tape off. Um, a lot of people do, so don't feel bad if you need to. And then again, I'm going to paint across top. And as you can see, I push down on my brush to give me that nice edge across that top. It's a little bit of a trick that I've always done. I did it when I used to paint glassware and I used to do it for straight lines on glassware as well. So. I do inside of here, even though there's a drawer, I want to be able to know that if somebody pulls a drawer out, they're going to actually see the paint um, and it's going to be cohesive with the rest of the piece instead of a bunch of whatever else in there. So I do paint inside of there. Let me see here. 
and I'm kind of going lefty on this for a second, so I might have to switch this around and flip myself where I'm painting from, just to give you guys a little more of a look. Look how smooth that goes on. I love vintage duck egg, right? Who else loves vintage duck egg as much as I do? It's just like an amazing color. Do me a favor. Let me know what is your favorite Dixie Belle color to work with. So for me, it's either vintage duck egg. I love stormy seas too. Like stormy seas is, brrr, it's a good one, good one, good one. All right. And again, as you can see, it just goes on nice and smooth because of the brush. Here, I'm going to try and reach in here. Sorry, guys, if my head's in the way right now. I'm just trying to get into this piece, and I can't see from the other direction. See how nice and smooth that goes in? And we do make sure that we go in there. Everyone says sea glass. Um, this is, Ray said this is her favorite, too. Stephanie, sea glass. Stormy seas, yes. You know what my new favorite one is, though? I have to tell you guys, and I almost did this in that piece, was um, manatee gray. I really, really like like, I, there's something about manatee gray. It's got, like, that purple undertone to it. I'm looking because I saw the thing there, and I literally had to put it away tonight and say, no, let's not use it. Manatee gray is another color that I am just, like, to die for. Manatee gray with midnight sky as a blending for, like, accenting is the bomb. The bomb. Maybe next week that's what we'll work on, a manatee, manatee gray with uh, mid midnight sky. Kind of show how to blend it up. Stormy season, Savannah Mist. Yes. Savannah Mist is gorgeous, too. I did um, a whole piece in Savannah Mist um, for a breast cancer awareness thing. It was done with Savannah Mist and some tans and a couple pinks. came out awesome. Um, Marilyn said, as a newbie here, is there a place to see all the colors? Yes, you can see it on the Dixie Bell website, or any of your retailers can get you a, a sheet, a copy. If you email me, I will go ahead or message me on JJB Designs, and my stuff's in the front, up at the top, I mean. Um, I'll get that over to you, too. I have it as a PDF that I can get it to you. Uh, Cheryl said, I love Dusty Blue Tea Rose, Terracotta Coffee and Buttercream. Girl, you're just, you're like, just saying all my favorites right there. I love most of them. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Susan Brazil is actually spamming us. Susan, please stop spamming. Stop spamming Dixie Bell. We don't want politics on here tonight, guys. I'm sorry. I think we get enough of it in our own worlds. We don't need to have it where we're having fun. All right. What else we got going on here? Um, all right. Go across here. Now, you'll see there's some spaces that I missed, but I'm not that worried about it because I'm going to use my uh, sprayer to kind of blend them in a little bit. So... Let's turn this baby just a little so that I can work on more piece sides of it. Ooh, look at that. Straight on, straight on shot, right? All right, here we go. Perfect, so again, I don't know if you guys can see this, where I actually take my brush and I am going across and letting the brush actually make the line for me so that I do not have to actually tape it off. Works out great. And then I'm gonna come in around here. And again, use your brush to do your lines for you, right? Um, Jane put up her link, by the way, guys, anybody that is needing brushes, if your local retailer does not have them, Jane does have them. Thank you, Jane. Teresa said she loves Dixie Belle products. That makes two of us, girl. I live for Dixie Belle. Dixie Belle is my jam. So if you guys have followed any of my other videos, you know that I love using it for craft projects, stuff around the house. I've done doors with them. I've done... I'm um, still working on cabinets, trying to get my husband to let me paint them. Um, but I do a ton of furniture with them. Dixie Bell can be used on so many different surfaces that it's a great thing to have out there, right? Karen said she's using Manatee Gray on a picture frame now. Oh, that's great. I'd love to see pictures of it. I love it when people share um, their different things that they're doing. I know last week I had a, a bunch of people that shared stuff with me via my Facebook page, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. All right, so I do go underneath. So people say, do you paint underneath? I do, I take my brush, I got a little fuzzy here. I take my brush and I go underneath. 
because if they flip this thing over, they don't want to see half done edges on the bottom, right? So they want to see them all done. So I do flip under and go underneath this way. Let me see, I'm missing this. Guys, I got to get in front of this real quick and I apologize. Um, I just got to get this corner real quick and I couldn't get it the other way. And I just saw somebody put up Gravel Road is amazing. Gravel Road is absolutely amazing. So the thing about Gravel Road is it has that brown tone to that gray. And you can use that for a grunge look on stuff that is to die for, to die for. So I've done pieces where I've used the Gravel Road with Stormy Seas and uh, Savannah Mist. And then did some highlighting with um, Steel Magnolia, Moonshine Metallics. Very, very good. Very, very good. All right, let's go more up here. So it's funny because I normally wear my Dixie Belle apron because I have to wear an apron or something because I get my stuff all over my clothes. Um, so where's my Dixie Belle apron? Heck if I know. Don't know where it's at. So I'm wearing one of my husband's. So my husband, if I showed you this thing, it's like a dress on me. Because my husband is 6'2 um, and a big guy, so I'm wearing one of his shirts to paint in. And uh, so I don't get paint all over my clothes because it's Murphy's Law. If I don't wear something, I get it on my clothes, right? And so if you know, Dixie Belle on fabric doesn't come out. That's why we can paint fabric with it. It does wonderful with fabric. So if I get it on my clothes, it's just, it doesn't come out. So I can't be doing that, right? All right, we're going to flip this a little bit more. We're going to get this other side. So, who's getting ready for Christmas? I have to ask this. You know why? So, again, if you watch me on here, you all know that I have an autistic son who is fascinated with numbers and dates and, and different things. And he actually, every day, does a countdown to Christmas. He wakes up every morning, and the first thing he says is, Yes, Alexa. When is Christmas and when is Easter? I don't know why Easter is so important to him right now, but Christmas. And then every day when he counts down, it's just like that hole inside me goes, I'm not even ready. Not even ready. But he thinks it's great. <laughs> so we stay excited for it just for him. So Stephanie said, I'm going to paint my jeans with some DB. Nice. I'd like you to share that if you could once you paint them because I want people to see what you can do with them. If you guys... um. I believe it was Tracy, um, who has Tracy's Fancy, did some jeans at one point. And I want to say maybe Brandy has as well. Did an amazing job with them. And you know what Cece has done? If you guys haven't checked out some of her stuff either, Cece has actually painted sneakers. And they come out adorable, adorable, adorable. She's got some great videos, how to use Dixie Belle paint to paint sneakers. Like, cool, right? Who would think to paint sneakers? All right, so those of you just coming on, we are painting with Vintage Duck Egg, one of my absolute faves. And I don't know why I have fuzzes all over this thing. Um, but we went over how I cleaned it first and how I prepped it for tonight and did all the stuff on it. And then um, we're going to do the, the French, the, I'm just kind of showing how these go on nice and smooth because we're going to use this vintage duck egg on here. I'm, pro I'm definitely leaving the tops natural wood, and there's a good possibility that I may do um, leave the drawers natural wood, which I'll show you in a minute when we hit the next one. All right. Karen came on and said hello. Hi, Karen. Hey, Tina. How are you? And guys, if you ask questions or have comments that I'm not answering, I apologize. When I'm painting, I try and just keep painting with you guys because I feel like you guys want to see what I'm painting and not necessarily in my head, right? All right, we're going to do another turn. What do you think about that? Do another turn. All right, look, look at, we're getting there. We're getting there. We got one more side on this one. Awesome. So do you see how smooth that goes on? And in case you guys haven't noticed, I have not had to re-wet my brush because this paint, the coverage, see the coverage on this thing? This is a one coat so far and the coverage is amazing. Um, 
I honestly cannot think of any of the colors that don't have very good coverage. I will tell you, I did do a video last week about when you paint with white, how you should try to prime, or I do anyways, at least before I paint with white, but it's the only color that, no matter which paint you use, you have a little bit of trouble with coverage. It's just the way that it works. But a little trick, like I said, prime it first, and your white goes on really nice. I couldn't decide tonight between, if you guys weren't on before, let me explain this, between this and Manatee Gray, because Manatee Gray is another one of my faves, because I love the purple undertones in it. Like, they're just to die for. All right. Just got to get in. I, sorry, guys, so I'm sticking my head in the way. I just can't see right there, so I'm trying to make sure that I have it nice and covered. Look at that. I have not yet had to wet my brush once because of this coverage. Hey from Rochester, New York, Michelle. Hey Deborah. I see you put replay, but you don't have to. You're on our live now. So that's great. If you have any questions, you can ask and I can answer them for you. So those of you who do come on after we finish our live tonight, if you would do hashtag replay so that we know that you're still watching our videos. Also, if you go up into the top, into the description is everything about the Chalk Paint Enthusiast group. If you have not joined the Chalk Paint Enthusiast group, let me tell you, it's something that you need to do. So what it is, is it's a group of people like you, people like me, and people like the brand ambassadors. And they're all on there, and they answer questions, people ask questions, they show their awesome projects that they do, you learn new techniques, and everybody is so helpful. So in the, in the description is the link to the Chalk Paint Enthusiast group, so if you aren't already on there, please make sure to try and join it because I think you guys will find it very, very helpful. Also, there's a link to your local retailer so that if you are looking to purchase some more Dixie Bell stuff, please try and find your local retailer first and buy small business because we always need to support our small business, especially right now. You know, COVID is just doing such a, it's, it's bad. It's so bad right now with people. So if you could just help out your local retailers, that would be awesome. If you can't find your local retailers, all my information and my social media is in there as well. So I'd be more than happy to help you. So if I don't have it, I can send you to somebody that does. All right, so we got this first coat on this one, right? So what I'm going to do is, um, hey, Lynn. Hey, Lynn and Cleveland, thank you. Ooh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Nice. All right, I'm going to push this one back a little bit. And we're going to pull this one out, and I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. All right, there you go. Now we're gonna work on this one. So let me turn this baby around. I got stuff everywhere. So everybody always asks me what this is. This is a hydraulic table, and that is the controls for it. My husband got it for me for Christmas, one of the best things besides my festival sander. And it's hydraulic, so it brings it up. I'm actually sitting on a mechanics chair right now, and this brings it to my level, so it's really easy to paint everything. Um, now people are going to ask, where did I get it? Because everybody does. Harbor Freight. <laughs> All right, so let's turn this around here. So now we're going to paint the other one. So I explained this before. This one has the same exact drawer, but I think that I want to keep it solid wood. I think I'm going to keep this and this wood, and the rest of it is going to be painted. So we're going to take this baby out. Hey, Barbara in Illinois. How you doing? All right, so we're gonna put this baby out, and I just realized I did miss something on my stuff here, so I wanna just wipe something down real quick so that I can make sure that this gets nice and clean. All right. All right, so you ready to start painting some more? All right, I am gonna wet my brush, dampen it again. I'm just gonna use my continuous mist sprayer. They are the bomb. If you don't own one, when you're using your chalk paints, any type of chalk paint, they are the bomb because they help your paint go on nice and smooth. See how it just glides? Especially on your second coat, that's how you get a second coat without having streaks of any type. Valerie said, I need, please. What do you need, Valerie? I'd love to help you. I'm just not sure what you need. All right. Here we go. Oh, I just love this color. And if you're just joining us, I'm Cheryl with JJ Bean Designs. 
And please, when you come on, let me know where you are following from. If you're watching this after the live, please let us know by hashtag replay. We love to know that people continue to watch our videos even after we're off of here. We want people to learn and, and use our products. Oh, brushes. All right, so Valerie, um, check with your local retailer. There is a link up in the description. If they can help you, reach back out to me, and I know somebody that can probably help you, okay? And I can get you over to them. Um, because some of the local retailers do have brushes, so please try and reach out to them first. Like I always say, we want to give our local retailers business. Um, so we want to try and reach out to them first to give them business. Sorry, guys, I'm kind of sitting in front of this because I'm trying to get this one section here and not block you. Oh, Ontario, nice. Bakersfield, California, watching from Maine. Hello, Sandra in Maine. I am in New Hampshire, where it is was rainy all day today. <laughs> it was rainy, 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 um, and now we're about to get cold again. They said that the cold is coming. We're done our... Our little, we had our little Indian summer thing going on all last week, and I guess they've decided Indian summer's done. Time for the cold again. Um, British Columbia, Canada. Hi, Chester VA. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So um, I'm using my Dixie Bell flat medium, and I always say your tools of your trade is the most important. Oh, thanks, Sherry. I appreciate that. Hello in South Georgia. Um, you can have the best paint in the world, but if you have a brush that is just not a good brush, your finish is still not going to come out the way that it needs to come out. So, I personally use all Dixie Belle brushes because they have a filament. Here's one right here I can show you. Look how nice and soft their filament. This brush is so old. I've used this brush so many times. They clean up really nice, and um, they just make my paint go on smooth. Cedar City, Utah. Hello, Lisa Scott. Um, so she says, duck egg color, small world. So duck egg, yes. I love duck egg. All right, so we're going to do a turn. We're going to flip. All right, shoot, miss most of your live. I adore your teaching. Thanks, Erin. Erin, you're good because I'm actually still doing the second one, and I'm only on the first side of the second one. So let's going to flip this again. Ooh. All right. So again, how did I prep this piece? Because remember I said to you, prepping your piece is the most important. The first thing I did, because this had previously had a different finish on it, I made sure that there was nothing loose and nothing chipping, nothing coming off of this, because you would never want to paint over paint that is not secure. If I felt that the paint was not secure and there were things that needed to be... Um, Sand it down or whatever. <laughs> Aaron just said, "Lucky me, Aaron, you just you know, make me blush, you make me blush." Um, I would not paint if I thought that it had loose paint on it because if you paint over loose paint, what you put on is going to come off. So you definitely don't want to do that. So what I did with this one to make sure I had no loose paint is I actually lightly sanded it, which is. I actually use my rad pads. They have the, if you haven't used rad pads yet, they are a pad that you can get from your Dixie Bell dealer. They're made from surf prep and they are the bomb because they bend, they move, they do everything they need to do to get into spaces, but they have them in several different grits and they're not expensive and they last, they're very durable and they last a long time. So I used my rad pad, went in around it uh, to make sure that I had no loose on here. And then I cleaned it with white lightning. And white lightning, I just saw Dolores come on. Hello, Dolores. Um, and white lightning is an amazing cleaner. If you haven't used that yet, white lightning um, is what I always use on all of my stuff to clean it. All right, so we just finished another side. I just want to get up to there, up to there. All right, we're going to flip. So as this one over here is drying, which I'll show you in a second, I can see my brush strokes because it's my first coat, but I'm not worried about it because when I go to do the second coat, you won't see any of those brush strokes anymore. Hello in Oklahoma, April. So I want you guys to, I guess I gotta tell you guys, you guys usually see my lives and I use my iPhone usually. 
I actually won an iPad. Can you believe it? I won an iPad. So I'm doing this on an iPad tonight. And my blind butt can actually see everything you guys are typing. And I'm so excited because normally I have to have Dixie Bell answer half of my stuff because I can't see what people are typing because I'm blind. All right. I'm so excited tonight. I get to actually see what everybody's saying and respond. And it's nice. And hopefully you guys have a pretty clear, clear, clear uh, way of seeing everything. All right, so one of the things I was explaining before is I don't tape off. I take my brush. Do you guys see how I push my brush to make that edge? I'm going to flip it, and then I push my brush to make that edge so that I don't have to tape off. That's how I use mine. You can tape off if you want to for edging, but I just take my brush, and again, I take it, and I come down, and I let the brush do the work and make the edge for me. Your brush should do the work for you. You shouldn't have to push very hard, and you should be able to just enough to put it down. Um, Carol said, is White Lightning your product? Real quick, I just want to go over it with her real quick. This is White Lightning. It is a cleaner from Dixie Bell, and it's two tablespoons per gallon. I can tell you this is a brand new one. Mine that I have is only like this empty, and I've had it for like a year and a half, because what I do is I take it, and I mix it in a spray bottle, Carol, and I keep it with myself, and I use it to spray down. You spray your piece down. You scrub it pretty good. I use like a, I use like a, um, I don't want to say a Brillo pad, but like a, a scrubby. And I scrub it down, and then I use hot water to rinse the white lightning off of the piece because you don't want to paint over chemical. White lightning is a chemical. So, um, but yes, that's what white lightning is. All right. So I'm going to go back over to here. And again, I'm going to take my brush and let it make the angle and the edge for me. I just press it down, and then I come down. So I don't have to worry about taping off because of that. So how do you get to get to be able to do that? I literally, it's been practice. Practice for me. Practice, practice, practice. And it happens. And again, you just let the brush make the edge for you, right? Does the paint have a strong smell? Donna, no, the, our paints are all low VOC, so they do not have a smell. I paint in my home, and I never have an issue. I, I know dealer locally, another Dixie Belle dealer that I am friends with locally, she's actually pregnant, and she can paint because it has low VOC, so it does not stink up your home or do anything like that. So you'll love these paints. I wouldn't use anything that wasn't low VOC because I wouldn't want all that chemical smell coming out. And I don't like to paint outside, especially with winter coming, right? Who wants to paint outside? If I lived in the warm weather still, I'd be like, yeah, let's paint outside. Hi in Indiana. Ann just came on and said she's watching from Indiana. Very nice. And again, the other thing is, do you guys see how I'm doing that with my brush? Sometimes I'll do that just to get up there to that little corner area. It's okay to shake your brush around. Shake your groove thing. Shake your groove thing. Shake your groove thing. Yeah, yeah. So shake your brush thing instead and get your corners up there. All right. You guys ready for the next flip? Jennifer asked, what color am I using? I'm using Vintage Dug Egg. One of my absolute faves. Fave faves. All right. We're going to do another flip. And as I flip, I don't know if you guys can see this, but back here, I actually missed a little spot at the bottom, so I'm going to come in with my brush. All right, we're going to get to this side over here. It's funny because I can feel the differences on this side of the piece. feels like it has a little bit more, um, like the finish is not as, was not as like glossy or on. I can feel it like kind of gritty. David said, um, I love hitting our local auction house for deals on furniture mirrors. Where do you find your furniture, Cheryl? So, truth, I have a lot of people that reach out to me um, and say, hey, I saw your stuff and I have this I want to get rid of. Are you interested? That happens quite a bit. I go on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. I do go to local thrift stores. However, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I am cheaper than cheaper than cheap. I try not to find, um, I try to find furniture as 
cheap enough so that if I do a lot of fancy stuff to it, because for me, if you guys have ever followed my stuff, some of my stuff's fancy. So for every fancy piece, I do two plain pieces because I sold to sell and fancy. A lot of my fancy stuff is like a specific person. Um, so definitely, I hit thrift stores, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, stuff like that. Um, Karen said it's not easy to pay outside because of the warm weather. Yeah, I agree. You have to gauge the time of day. Sharon said no need to sand. No, there's no need to sand. I did scuff this one, though, because of the paint that was on it. But no, you don't need to sand your stuff. Um, if you're painting on laminate, though, you would need to use an adhesion primer. And our adhesion primer is slick stick. But otherwise, you do not need to sand your piece down. I know some people that do sand every piece down still, and that's their choice. I can tell you that I do not. Because, sorry guys, I gotta stick my head in the way real quick so I don't get paint on the top of that. I do not sand my pieces because honestly, um, Dixie Bell, you don't need to sand. You need to prep it by fixing any gouges, cleaning it very well. Um, I suggest you fix anything that needs to be repaired on it before you paint. Uh, check your drawers, making sure that there's no veneer coming up if you have veneer, because a lot of furniture has veneer. Um, checking to make sure it's clean is like the biggest thing. Clean, 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 because if you have a piece of furniture that is not clean, believe me, your paint will reflect it. All right, so you always want to definitely prep your stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to turn this this way because we're going to go back to this piece. Can you see that this is not dry, but this is dry right here? So I'm going to start, I'm going to start to the side that I started did first, which is right here, which is absolutely dry. All right, guys, we're going to do our second coat. And, um, oh, that's funny. David said he used to pick up place for people. So I'm not going to lie, David. I call people too and ask them where they are. Um, red and black transfer is awesome. You painted a similar piece, painted it red. All right, so for the second coat, I'm going to spray my brush. I didn't even put any more paint on there. Can you guys see how it just puts that second smooth coat on there for me? Now, you can paint, do your piece or you can spray your brush. I do both. How many coats does it take? Generally, it takes two coats. Um, Barbara just asked how many coats does it take. It generally takes two coats. However, um, sometimes lighter colors may take a couple, another coat, um, just because of the lighter color, sometimes the coverage isn't as much. Um, but if you want to get away from doing that, go ahead and prime your piece first, and then you should just be able to use the two coats. I don't know if you guys can see how smooth this is going on. I'm spraying my brush again, just using a little bit of a mister, using the paint that's already loaded onto this brush. And I'm just painting that second coat, and I'm actually going to spray it nice and mist it. You don't want it wet, like dripping. You want to have it enough so that it helps spread your paint around to get that second coat on, right? All right, so again, you guys, watch us. Just lightly misting. It's a continuous mist. So I spray it. I continuously mist. I dipped in just a tiny bit of paint. And now I put it on, and look how smooth that goes on. No brush strokes. Dixie Belle paint is self-leveling anyways, so you typically will not get brush strokes as long as you're not using a super coarse brush. Um, but you can definitely get no brush strokes if you use a spray mister for your second coat. All right, so that was a quick second coat, right? Look how fast that second coat goes on. Plus, also, misting down your paint, just to let you know, does not hurt the integrity of the paint. The paint has just such high pigment in it and the quality of it that misting it does not affect it. You can mist your paint, and it actually helps your paint go a little bit farther, which is just fine. All right, so I sprayed that down. I am, again, going to... Can you guys see how that's just spreading that paint over there really nicely, given that second coat? And then go here, spraying again. I've had very little paint on this brush, and I'm just taking what is on there and spreading it through. Get that second coat finish on there. Now, when this is dry, I am going to take a 220 pad. As a matter of fact, it's going to look just like this one. This is a Dixie Bell sanding pad, which has been through the ringer. This is a nice one that has the foam on it. 
and I do lightly sand. I don't push down. I just literally, just like this, lightly sand on it, and it takes that chalk finish off, and it gives it that nice, smooth, as I say, smooth as butter finish. Now, I know what everybody's going to ask next, because this is the next question I always get. How do you seal your piece? Dixie Bell, you don't have to seal. It actually will um, cure itself within 30 days. But most of my pieces I um, sell, and I sell them pretty fast. So I always put a top coat on them because I don't want to wait for that 30 days for it to cure. Where do I get this sprayer? So um, I carry the sprayers. I carry them in my store. Um, a lot of your local retailers have them as well. So Jennifer, if you go up into the description above, and click on find your local retailer, you can find one near you. If they don't have one, because please try your local retailer first. If they don't have one, reach back out to me on JJ Bean Designs. All of my information is in the description as well. And I would be more than happy to find a way to get you something. If I don't have it, I always say, hey, I got me some connections. So I can get you in touch with someone that can help you and get you what you need. All right, we're gonna turn this one around. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love this color. I just can't get enough of it. Oh. It's kind of like when you, I don't know, I have grandchildren. I don't know if anybody else here watching. Where in New Hampshire are you? She said, I'm in Mass. Hey, Lori, I'm in Hollis, New Hampshire. That's where my house is. But my store that I sell out of is in Amherst, New Hampshire. So... But I have grandchildren. Matter of fact, my grandson turned a year old yesterday. I'm so excited. Um, and I love this color. And when I was saying, like, oh, I love this color, that's the same thing I do when I see my grandchildren. Oh, I love them when I just want to kiss them up. Because who doesn't want to kiss up their grandchildren or their kids, right? All right. Can you guys see how smooth? Zero breast strokes, zero bubbles nothing it is just a smooth 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 as butter finish believe me it's the brush and it's the spray bottles they help tremendous you I personally don't use a push sprayer meaning like one that you would go like this with I have the continuous mist because it's a really fine mist and it's just enough to help that paint get across but not soak my furniture down which is what you want to do all right, we're gonna flip to just one more side. And then, oh, wait a minute, I just realized I missed a spot, guys. Sorry, I gotta get in front of the camera again. All right, we're gonna flip this around. Flip this around. And so when I flipped, I don't know if you guys can see this, but I realized that I missed this over here with my second coat. And I just stuck my arm in over here. So I'm gonna reach and do that. I look too young to have grandbabies. Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. I do. I have three grandbabies. I have one that just turned a year yesterday. I have a granddaughter who's uh, two and a half, almost two and a half, and then I have a grandson that's nine. Um, and they are amazing. I always say to people, you you love your children, but when you have grandchildren, it is a whole new love. Let me tell you what. It is unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. All right, let me see here. We're putting on that last little fancy coat over here of the second coat on this piece. And again, like I told you guys before, I do do underneath here because if they flip them over, I want to make sure that they don't see anything that does not go cohesive with the rest of the piece. Tiny bit because I need to get this one edge over here. And again, we're going to spray down. And then look how smooth that goes on, guys. This your continuous mist sprayer is your friend. Is your friend. All right. All right. So I'm going to swing it over here. So if you guys are asking, hey Beth, thank you. Hello from Toronto. Hello from New Hampshire. So this is Vintage Duck Egg, one of my favorite colors. I am going to keep the top natural, and the drawers are going to be natural as well. Um, but I have two of these. I love these because they have the long legs on, and they're just like, I call them my sexy lady in tables. So they got those long legs. But um, so 
Guys, if you haven't joined the Chalk Paint Enthusiast group, the link is up in the up in the description. I'm trying to check my watch to make sure we're not going over time. Um, it's in the description. Please join it. There's so much there to help you guys out. There's so many things um, that you can learn through there. Debbie said, looking so pretty. Thank you, Junie. Hi, in Toronto, Canada. I'm from New Hampshire. Hello in Florida. Hello, Australia. Nice. My son loves Australia. He does the Sydney accent, like, perfect all the time. Um, so, join the Chalk Paint Enthusiasts. If you enjoyed my video, please, please come back. I do usually come in on Thursdays. Next week, I believe, I have to look, I think it is a Thursday as well. I think Christmas, I mean, Thanksgiving Day, I'm not going to be doing a live. And also, I do do lives on my page as well. All of my information, if you enjoyed what I was doing, is in the top there, JJ Bean Designs. You can follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, or my Facebook page. And please don't forget, if you need stuff, please go to your local retailer. The links are up in the description. Always order from your local retailer first. Give our business to our small businesses. If you can't find it, reach out to me and I will help you. If you have questions on anything, I will always, always help. So please message me on my Facebook and I will answer any of your questions. I help people all the time. It is my job and my joy to teach people and let them learn what I do. Um, Joyce said, Chalk Paint Enthusiast on Facebook. Yes, in the description of this live, um, you can see a link for Chalk Paint Enthusiast. It's a group where you can learn all different um, techniques. You can ask questions. There's so many things on there. There's people like me, like our brand ambassadors, and like you on there. So it's a great group of people that learn things. Julianne said, what treatment will you put on the top? I'm probably going to scuff it and use no pain gel stain and um, go from there. So I'll have my finished pieces on my page when they're done, and you guys can check them out. All right. All right, everybody. I had a great time tonight. I always do. Always, always do. Carol, you just logged in. Thank you. Um, look forward to watching the replay. I look forward to hoping you learn something. If I wasn't able to answer your questions, please understand I will come back on tonight, answer all of your questions for you. And if you have any that I could not answer, please go to my website or to my Facebook page. Message me. I'll answer any of your questions for you guys. All right. All right, everybody, have a great night, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.